Further in Surah chapter uh, 49, Surah Al Hujrat, verse number 12, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuladhina amunuj tanibu kathiran min adhan, inna ba'da adhan is. So, O oh you who believe, abstain, abstain from making a lot of assumptions. And many or some of the assumptions may be sinful. Wala tajassasu wala yaqtu ba'adukum ba'adun. And do not be inquisitive and spying on each other. And do not be backbiting or slandering or gossiping about each other. أَيْحَبُّ أَحْدُكُمْ أَنْ يَأْكُلَ لَحْمَ أَخِيهِ مَيْتًا فَكَرْهْتُمُهُ وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ تَوَّابُ الرَّحِيمُ And would you love to eat the flesh of your own dead brother? So God's being backbiting, slandering are the action which eats of the act, hasanat and the good deed of a person to the point that as if you are eating the flesh of your own brother who have passed away. You will absolutely, surely will be a per, uh, uh, abhor or repulsive of such action. And be conscious of Allah. And indeed Allah is all forgiving and merciful. And further Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes as the hadith of Nabi alayhi salatu wa salam says, Ya ayyuhun nasu inna khalaqnakum min dhakrim wa unsa wa ja'alnakum shi'uban wa qaba'ila li ta'arafu. إِنَّ أَكْرَمَكُمْ إِنَّ اللَّهِ يَتْقَاكُمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ عَلِيمًا خَبِيرًا So further Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describe in the verse number 13 of Surah Hujrat which is chapter number 49 that O you who mankind now the address and shift from the believers to the entire humanity indeed we created you from a male and female and created you among nations and tribes so that you may know each other indeed the most honorable among you in the sight of Allah is the one who have taqwa. Indeed, Allah is all aware and have the knowledge of everything what you do. In Surah Anfal, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about Muslims that how important it is to be united and to stand by each other and respect for each other is needed in the heart and in our deeds. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَعَتِيُوا اللَّهَ وَالرَّسُولُ وَلَا تَنَازَهُ فَتَفْشِلُوا وَذَهْبَ رِيحَكُمْ وَسْبَرْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ مَعَ السَّابِرِينَ So obey Allah and His Messenger. The first criterion of unity of Muslims or humanity is belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and obedience to Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَلَا تَنَازَهُ And do not fall in dispute and dis division. فَتَفْشِلُوا وَتَذْهَبَ رِيحَكُمْ So what will happen? That will, you will lose your heart from each other and your effect of dominance or strength will be lost. Tazhabu rihakum. Reha means air, but it means that what you have an effect on the others. Like when we talk about in general in a nation, we say such and such nation have such and such characteristics. We know that if we mention about Chinese, well, Chinese have certain attributes as a nation. When we talk about American or European or African, everybody gets certain image about that nation because of whatever they have presented or been marketed about them in the world. And Asian and so and so forth. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us, if you obey Allah and His Messenger and stay united, you will have your effect on the other nations of the, that this people are such good and righteous. And if you divide and break among themselves, which has happened in the last 30 years and 40 years, what we have seen, that Muslims are killing each other, calling names to each other, division and, and giving fatwa against each other, that's what it leads to. The lack of respect and honor, that when people say, you guys are such and such people, you guys are killing yourself, you are the one who caused the mischief, which is absolutely not part of Islam. As there are terrorist activity being done in the name of Islam as we know and we say terrorists have nothing to do with Islam and terrorism has no faith and no religion of any religion and faith person who commit violence against other terrorism by definition means violence physical or any form hate action against other people who are citizens unarmed citizens there are freedom fighters which are different at this is in Palestine and in Kashmir 
That is a different situation. Human right and Islam give us a right to bear arms, to defend ourselves and our home and our families when somebody violates and attacks us. This is something to understand. Safety, security is the most important part of human civilization. Many Muslims who, who are persecuted in their own homeland because of whatever reason, we don't want to go into detail, time is limited, who came to another nation to find peace and security are not seeking to harm. But among them, if somebody use their cover to come and cause terrorism in other nations, that is a sinful act and condemnable act should be condemned universally. And do not be like those. And look, beware. Do not be like those who march forth from their homes, exulting and merely to show off to the people. And they prevented others from the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah with his might and knowledge encompasses whatever they do. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds to the believer and to the whole humanity inna allah la yughayyir ma bi qawmin hatta yughayyir ma bi anfusihim indeed allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not change the status of a nation until and unless they themselves change the status of their own they should make an effort and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give the reward for that as we know it has been last week we, i was here and there were a lot of officials were here thank god alhamdulillah and thanks to the government of the United States that the officials and the government is, is with the citizen. They showed their presence here for something event happened thousands of miles away from this country. And they were here to assure us that they are willing to work with us. Obviously, there is always a concept of a boogeyman. What is a boogeyman? Boogeyman is a person who is to be not like, which is not a material, but this is a person. You are supposed to go get that person. This kind of mentality is being created among people. That they versus us. And we should live above that. And we should be participating into the city, into the county, into the state, into the all level of this government if we think we belong to this land. Obviously, if we immigrants do not feel so, our children definitely need to be assured. And as people before us who came to this country or who migrated, like we can say that people from subcontinent when Pakistan was made migrated from India to Pakistan. The parents say that we were born Indian, but we are Pakistani. They honorably, respectfully took the honor to be Pakistani. Because there was an idea and concept of a state for Muslims. Wrong happened, right happened, we are not going in detail. How people start owning a privilege. We came to this country with our free will and we have a right to live in peace and we should be given equal protection as a minority. And everywhere minorities should be respected and should be given respect. As we see the Prime Minister of New Zealand has gone beyond the call. Beyond the call, it's still they are doing the remembrance and commemoration of those people who lost their life and those the martyrs in that place by a foreigner. He was not a New Zealander, he was a, 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 a Australian. Now if that would have happened, to anybody, anywhere else in the world, they would have declared war on those people. But this is something we see that how things are, there are a lot of things. We can look into it and see how the world see us as a Muslim. I think even Muslim countries do not respect the lives of Muslims as much as the New Zealanders have shown their respect for the Muslims or minority for that matter. Now in this part, we have to be aware of it. We do not want such tragedy to happen and repeat with us. So. This is something very important to understand the safety and security of every life, especially security and safety begin from our own self. If I, if I do not make sure that I am in a safe place and safe time and not to be in wrong place, wrong time, then I'm obviously making myself available for trauma. If I stand in front of an oncoming train and do not see that a train is coming, then I'm the most stupidest person to expect to live unless a miracle happens. Miracles don't happen every day. Allah says, I will not change the status of a nation unless they change themselves. So what happened there is a lesson for them, for us, for the whole world. That this thing can happen and it has happened and this was not the last to be happening. Now what is our duty as a Muslim? We cannot be the victim mentality. Muslims are not victims. 
Muslims are the believers in Allah and we are supposed to be having equally capable body and physical and mental and all kind of capacity to do good and defend ourselves and defend others. Allah give us the responsibility. You should be defending the weak and minor. Rather than becoming victim, we should be protector of the victims. We are looking for sympathy from outside. Allah is our guardian and Allah is with us. This is the concept of martyrdom shahada, which is no religion teaches. Very unusual concept that life after death that Allah says, do not call those who died in the path of Allah dead, they are alive. So the concept of martyrdom and shahadat and the life after shahadat being living is not being preached and taught by any religion that I know of. Except the Islam which gives us the promise of that. So death is not a fear but the suffering and the violence is also not allowed. I'm not going to let anybody come and break our lives. So what should we do? As the first responder of the problem is that we should be first. Our organization should be first. We should have a security, safety plan and a team in every single Muslim community, Islamic centers. We should have a people assigned, delegated, trained to how to deal with the emergency and crisis. We do not do that. We come in for five minutes prayer and think we've done a favor by putting $10 in the masjid and walk out. No, we have to be responsible. Otherwise, if not us, our children will be suffering too. We can see that in India, there are 25 crore Muslims, yet they cannot speak a word. We see in the Palestine Muslims, our majority in the country cannot defend themselves. This was the inactivity and inaction of the Muslim Ummah, that we do not want to be part of the team. We just want to be my, me, my and I. And this is not how we're going to survive. So when we are into this situation, we should be responding with safety and security. We should have a vigilance. We should be observing whenever we enter. We should not be walking like this. We should walk like this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says you should be strong. Allah loves a strong, healthy moment more than a weak and sick moment. We all should be cogent for each other. This is what the unity in Islam is. We should be performing regular drill for emergency, how to be evacuating our facility and how to save. As they say, first is run, hide and fight. There are the three things to be done. Because like this hall, if somebody enters from this door and starts shooting, none of us can be safe. And if I try to hide behind this wooden piece or this one, this will not hold the bullet. Bullet goes through the wood. We need to make sure that some people should be there responsible for guarding every single masjid. It should be worked with the collaboration of the organization because one person cannot do it. So there should be rotation of volunteers and they should be assigned regular responsibility. Security people should be there. When, if I'm driving by here or if any criminal driving by here and see that the police is here, they will stop outside. But if the police is not on this door, then what will happen? By the time you call police, it's about five minutes they will arrive. By that time, somebody has an automatic weapon, that will be done. Everybody will be gone. And this is not what we should do. Our women are being violated on the streets and being harassed. They should be trained into self-defense. Martial art training should be done. We should provide those kind of centers and training for self-defense. Not to hurt others for self-defense. We cannot be walking like victims. We have to come out of this victim mentality. Our women should be trained into self-defense. Our men and boys and girls and children should be trained into self-defense. We should be healthy. We should not be overweight we should not be sick we should be taking care of ourselves the body is the trust of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we need to start talking we should be also educating people we should be establishing communication if we don't know a strange and a stranger as some of the politicians said Muslim enclaves in America in New Jersey one of the politicians said what is a Muslim enclave we got a hall which is open from right to left we should have a security person to be standing in a position where if somebody comes in, he should take that person down with the train license weapon. There should be a full security plan. This is not a joke. And people who die are one part and those who get victim and injured and wounded, that's another part. So we need to be parting with the government, working with them and have a full flash plan to protect us and ourselves and our families and our community. We should not be playing victim anymore. This has to come out of ourselves. So we should be trusting Allah, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us. We never sleep in our home without locking the doors. We never go to bed without making sure all the things are in place.
We don't leave our car unattended, even that is parked in the road outside. In these centers, we need to make sure somebody does not stay here breaking windows and walk into it. So security is a very extremely important for us and our women and children. Because then after that, what happens is that sympathy comes. We do not need to be people sympathizing unnecessarily where we could have protected ourselves.